The Audi TTS racing around a California track has a powerful engine under the hood and nobody at all behind the wheel. It's not operated by remote control. It really is driving itself. Chris Gertis and his Stanford University engineering team equipped the car they call Shelly with a powerful computer, a precise GPS system, and a big red button that tells the car to take us for a ride. And Whoa. off we okay. go. Off we go out of the pits. And so we're out of the Whoa. pits. There's a pit road speed yeah. limit, what we'll observe. Yeah. Okay. But as soon as we're out here on the track, we're Whoa. free to run. And making this clear, your hands are free from the My wheel. My hands are free from the wheel. It's just here in case Whoa. anything goes wrong. <laughs> On a track still damp from a rainstorm, Shelly drove as fast as she could, slowing just enough to make it around the hairpin turns. The speedometer says 70 miles an hour. I realize I'm putting my life in the hands of technology that doesn't have hands. And my stomach? Don't ask. Without humans inside the car, Gertis and his team have let it run wild, reaching 130 miles an hour on Utah's Bonneville Salt Flats. The car even raced up the steep switchbacks of Colorado's Pikes Peak all by itself. So you studied how race car drivers would do this and taught the car to do that. It's a very big part of this project is understanding how the very best drivers control Yikes. the car. By monitoring brain activity, Gertis and his team actually get inside the mind of race car driver and track owner David Vodden. We operate at the subconscious level, and I, and I sometimes use the term reflex behavior. If you're thinking you're going too slow, get the front wheels to bite, go, go. Gertis is trying to build Vodden's quick reflexes and instincts into the software that keeps Shelley on the road and can make her a safer driver than many of us. Do you think if they steal enough stuff from your brain, they can teach a computer to drive? drive as well as a, as a human can drive? They're taking everything I've got and when it's all done, they're going to be geometrically better than I am and probably most others. And if we save young people's lives who drive cars, that would be awesome. In order to be accepted, these cars should drive as well as the best human driver. In the past couple of years, cars that drive themselves have gone from futuristic dream to reality. Google is operating a test fleet that has surpassed 300,000 road miles without incident. Look, Ma, no hands. <laughs> Legislators have made the cars street legal in Nevada, Florida, and California. It promises to bring safer roads and lower insurance rates, says insurance analyst Donald Blight. If you get 50, 70, 80, 90 percent of all the cars on the road being driverless, the need for insurance goes way down because the number of accidents go way down. Premiums uh, could, could fall 80 to 90 percent. I mean, it'd be a very substantial savings for the, for the consumer. With less than 33,000 fatalities in 2011, traffic-related deaths have declined to their lowest point since 1949. But today, over 90 percent of auto accidents are caused by driver error. So the sooner we get drivers' hands off the wheel, the safer our roads are likely to be. Several manufacturers are talking about cars in the 2015 time frame that will drive for themselves if you're stuck in a traffic jam on a freeway. So I think we're, we're seeing the first instances of this technology not too many years away. Yikes! Oh, wow! Still, take it from me, it takes a this leap of faith to leave the driving up to the car. For CBS This Morning, John Blackstone, Willows, California.